All right, friends, it's time for another MCU rant, this time about Moon Knight. That's right, friends, it's your main man Z here. And maybe my opinion is in the minority. Maybe you didn't watch it. Maybe you don't care. But I am here once again to rant about Disney Plus and the MCU and, and how it is is uh, portrayed there. And I'm going to specifically talk about the Moon Knight. I'm going to try not to get too excited about this one or get myself excitable. The Moon Knight starring Oscar Isaac and, I don't know, a bunch of other people. Ethan Hawke was in it. Uh... Gaspar Uliel was in it for two whole seconds. Don't even know why he was in it. Okay, six episodes, and let's 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 be positive first. Let's talk about the good. Let's talk about the good. In the good, we can say that Oscar Isaac acted his pants off. The man is a great actor. He was did I thought he did really good in this. He worked really really hard slapping himself in the face playing multiple characters multiple personalities and for those of you who are unfamiliar with the story we start off and this will be spoilers fyi we start off with a uh, mild-mannered gift shop owner who ties himself to a bed doesn't ends up in weird places doesn't know why seems to have this whole life he slowly realizes as his life unravels that maybe the life that he has is not his and apparently he shares a body with another personality. That personality is Mark Spector, mercenary extraordinaire. Uh, they didn't give much about Mark's backstory, so they left that kind of open. And eventually he, he comes to understand that they are, I guess, possessed, or they work for an ancient Egyptian god named Khonshu, who's the god of the night sky. And he gives, him, gives them superpowers so that they can defend the people, not the people of the night, but the travelers of the night, as they say. Long story short, there's a bad guy who wants to awaken a different Egyptian god, Ahmet, uh, who has a different philosophy on life. Uh, Khonshu is about defending those who've been wronged, and Ahmet is about punishing those who will commit wrong so it's a little bit about predestination versus free will nice concept not executed barely talked about at all so let's keep going so they eventually figure out that uh Ahmet's going to be released and in this throughout the story there's a conflict between the multiple personalities inside of the inhabiting mark specter steven's body they meet uh, Mark's wife, or soon-to-be ex-wife. So apparently he had an entire life that the other personality didn't know about. She comes to help them. They attempt to stop Ahmet from being realized that Ethan Hawke's character is, a, is a actually a really good character. Ethan Hawke was great, too. I really enjoyed him, added some cool flavors. Zero character arc. Really didn't get to know anything about him. Don't know what motivates him. Don't know why. We, we learn a little tiny pieces here and there, but really nothing fleshed out. And the pacing of this show was just absolutely dreadful. They try to pull a mind trick on you, which makes you think whether or not anything that we're seeing is real or if this person's just completely insane. Obviously, it's an MCU show, so everything must be real or wouldn't make any sense. They end up... Uh, Mark gets killed again and ends up having to come back uh, to the land of the living and stop Ahmet and... Conchu, big fight scene at the end. Okay, six episodes, we said. Pacing is all over the place. Uh, sometimes it was really boring. That's why I called it the snooze night. Sometimes it, it also had, you know, and I'm not going to go over the entire show. I'm just going to try to stay focused because I could rant for like a freaking hour on how bad this thing was. Had one of the worst fight scenes I've ever seen in an MCU show. There's a scene where they're on a boat, a CGI boat, where uh, the boat is being carried to the underworld by a uh, CGI hippopotamus. And C CGI hippopotamus just disappears. We don't know. Oh, I got to go inside and check something. I don't know who's steering the boat. I don't know. And there's a fight scene where instead of like Egyptian monsters or gods or something, that they're literally fighting regular people in hoodies who are made of sand or something. They're supposed to be souls. 
and it's the dumbest fight scene I've ever seen. Every time there was potentially a good fight scene, they flash out of it so that they can't, they, so they don't show anything. They, they they black out. The characters black out, and all you see is the aftermath of what's going on. Now, fundamentally, what I had the the biggest problem with this show is it doesn't make any coherent sense. The plot is written by a bunch of two-year-olds who can't seem to put together a coherent plot. And I'll explain why none of this makes sense at all, regardless. Not to mention the depiction of mental illness I found to be ridiculous. So you're telling me that two people can inhabit the same body, be married to the same woman, and she's okay with that, no big deal, whatever. It also had one of the cringiest moments I think I've ever seen in an MCU movie, next to the all-woman stand and pose in Avengers Endgame. So we'll get to that too. All right, let's start. We, we, we talked about the fight scene, but let's talk about why this logically makes no sense. There's a whole part where Mark has to, the character arc is that these two characters have to balance themselves out, right? There's some childhood trauma that forced Mark to create Steven. The childhood trauma, he's a city-dwelling Jewish kid in New York who magically walks to a cave with his brother. You know, I have caves all over the place in New York City. Did you know there were caves where they just get flooded and people drown? I didn't know that, and I've been to New York City. It would have made more sense if he, like, fell in a sewer grate or something. Like, no, it just doesn't make any, any sense. So anyway, uh, he creates this character to deal with childhood trauma. Okay, fine. The big plot point for two episodes is they have to balance the scales. His heart's not full because there's two halves of one heart. Final, final spoiler, if you did not see it, there's a third personality, which they were hinting at the entire time. They hinted multiple times that there was a third personality that was much more violent and a killer and much you know darker character in there. So they balanced the two halves of the heart. Oh wait, there's a third person in there. That guy wasn't balanced. They didn't have any life-affirming conversations. They didn't have any conversation whatsoever. You didn't even know the guy existed until after the show is over. The scales wouldn't balance. They're like, oh, the scales balanced. No, they didn't balance. They didn't freaking balance. There's three people. Three people inhabiting this body. You didn't ask his opinion. You didn't balance him. So how does anything that you just did make any sense? They also keep fighting over like, oh, Who's going to kill, like, oh, I'm going to kill this person, and or, or, like, if I act like I'm, it, okay, there's this whole thing where Khonshu wants him to, like, punish the wicked or what have you, and then at the end, Mark's like, I'm not going to kill anyone. I just watched you throw throwing stars and use a knife to, to cut people's throats. You were killing people left and right. And now you're going to stop? They even had an entire scene where he got to see his entire body count inside of a room where there's like 24 dead people. Oh, after once I get to 35, that's when I stop killing people. And he goes, if I kill him, I'll be just like Ahmet. Dude, you already killed like 30 people. What's another guy matter? What's it matter? Doesn't matter at all. Doesn't even matter a little bit. And his girlfriend's killing people too because she's got razor wings and blah, 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 whatever. <sighs> Calm down. Nonsense. This is all nonsense. The stakes, there's also a part that it's while they're riding in the river of the damned, or, or like the, she's taking them through the sea to deliver their souls. They talk about there, there's souls that are in the sand, right? They're the ones that came up in the worst fight scene I've ever seen. There's a whole part where they're like, oh my gosh, there are souls falling from the skies. Didn't explain what that was. Didn't even tell anybody. They're just like, oh, I guess it was uh, the guy, you know, I guess it was Ethan Hawke's character taking more souls. I don't know. He's judging more people. They don't explain it. There's another part, too, where the girlfriend has to, Mark's dead and, 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 the, and his souls are in the underworld. And she's she wants to kill Ethan Hawke. So she's following him by pretending to be one of his crew. There are like 10 henchmen. And you wouldn't notice the extra random person. She literally gets in a car with them. She, all she does is cover her face. You wouldn't know who she was. You just wouldn't know that. That's just something you would not recognize. Hey, look, there's a random girl who was just trying to kill me 10 minutes ago. Oh, she's there with us now. Now let's talk about the, the final point that I want to make because I won't bore you guys with all this, but one of the cringiest moments, and it was just cringy because it was so ham-fisted. The dialogue was absolutely atrocious. 
And, you know, as I look here, I'm looking at Rotten Tomatoes. It says audience score 93%. I just don't think enough people watch. I didn't hear anybody talking about it. Nobody had hype things to say about it. Most people didn't even care. The critics have it 87%. Uh, don't get me wrong. Oscar Isaac, it was great. I like the setting. I like the Egyptian stuff. I like the gods. I like all that. I think that's all pretty cool. Ethan Hawke, great. Completely wasted Gaspard Uliel. Rest in peace. Uh, poor guy's dead now. Um, but the whole thing is just ridiculous. So she's she's a superhero now. She gets she becomes the avatar of the hippo goddess, right? And she's got wings and her costume's kind of ridiculous. It's fine. She's there's a car that flips over that's slowly being pushed where there's a little girl who could potentially be squished by the car. You know, this little girl could easily just walk two feet away. And she wouldn't be hurt. But the thing's going... It's the slowest car I've ever seen. It's its like just sliding on its side to, to, to potentially squish her. And there's nothing you could do about it. Like, it's just ridiculous. Absolutely nothing. It, it just, it's just ridiculous. But she saves the girl. And the girl turns to her and says... Oh. It, she says it in Arabic. She goes, Are you an Egyptian superhero? And she turns to her and goes, I am. I was just like, is this, this is the next cringiest moment next to the other cringy moment from Endgame. Like, she all she has to do is be a superhero. She didn't have to talk to anybody about Like, I, I just don't understand. It, the, the, their messaging is so clunky and so clumsy. So maybe I'm wrong. You tell me. Maybe you loved Maybe you loved it. Maybe you love Moon Knight. Maybe you think it's fantastic. I don't know. I just think uh, I thought it was absolutely dreadful and atrocious. It, I mean, it wasn't the worst thing I've ever seen, but it's definitely, I think it's the worst MCU thing I've seen. What do you think? Tell me. Let me know in the comments below. Am I a total moron and just have no idea what's going on? Either way, check out our live uh, podcast. It streams 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Friday nights. You can also download the podcast for free anywhere you can find podcasts on uh, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, all those great places. And, uh, you know, like and subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. We're, we're, we're climbing in subs. We really need the help here. We can really help this channel grow. Uh, but we'll catch you later because I'm on to the next one. Uh -huh.